Hi and welcome to this video where I'm going to take you through using sidechain with VST instruments. So this is a new feature for Cubase 9. Uh, the included Retrolog plugin has this ability and we're just going to take a quick look at how you would use it and some more interesting features that you can things you can do with it. So obviously with all sidechain things we have to set that up. So all I've got at the moment is just a straightforward uh, fairly mundane drum loop which I've used in the other videos so nothing particularly interesting about that um, and I've just opened up Retrolog on a, an instrument track so I'm going to turn this on and you'll notice that as soon as I turn it on uh, the input comes up here okay so I'm going to turn down oscillator one and I'm going to turn the input up so the only thing we're going to be hearing from Retrolog is going to be whatever audio we feed to its sidechain and then back on the sidechain feed track I'm going to do a few things so on sends I'm going to send that to the Retrolog turn that on I'm going to make it pre-fader for reasons that will become apparent in a minute and it's on the default send level of zero so we're just getting the level we want from there okay the reason I've made this pre-fader is because all I want to hear ultimately is going to be the audio which is coming through Retrolog I don't want the the, the dry unprocessed audio so to do that I'm going to turn this down and if that was on post we would have turned that down but now that feed is going through Retrolog so if we press play nothing happens okay the reason nothing happens is there is no MIDI being sent to Retrolog okay so it despite the fact that it's set to only use this uh, input here the amplifier and filter will only be triggered once it gets some MIDI so I'm just gonna quickly create some entirely mundane MIDI so just one note all the way through and now when we play it we get our original sample so as that plays round we can hear that now we can start playing around with the filters and the amplifier etc so at the moment they're pretty much going to be static because we've just got 100% sustain level and almost no uh, control anywhere else in the envelope so if we turn this down you can hear that working if I turn the resonance up it will be even more obvious even to the point of feeding back etc so well obviously you could automate that that's not really that interesting because a million and one filter plugins give you that um, what we can do that is interesting is send this some more interesting MIDI and then use the envelopes here to do something with them so if we just chop this up so with the, the scissors let's chop this up into quarter notes like that now that's doing something a bit more interesting and we can now use the envelope to control that so if I put in some that there and then I turn the envelope control up you can hear every note that's hitting you can hear it opening up etc we could do something else with the amp envelope as well because again at the moment this is just on so maybe We can use velocity control to control how much the uh, envelopes are changing. So if we change these like this and now put some velocity control of the filter envelope, you can hear that's changing there. So you can clearly hear that happening there. Maybe I'll turn the level up a bit, make it a bit clearer. So we can take a mundane loop and with just a bit of playing around with this, with nothing else, we can make this more interesting. And then obviously you've got all the control you can apply with uh, LFOs, etc., to it as well, uh, which I will leave you to play around with. But 
while on the first on the face of it you know you may just get a static filter i'm sure with a bit of playing around with uh interesting effects with notes and remembering of course with key follow as well if you turn the key follow up the pitch of this note will change the filtering as well so what we could do is make that although those ones are not changing at the moment if we make the key follow So there, they're going up with that, etc. So there's there's loads and loads of things you can do with this to make it sound uh, more interesting and with just a bit of playing around with that and the envelopes or maybe the note lengths. I'm putting some release time on there as well. You can do that and... And then, of course, once you've done that, you can probably bring back a bit in the original. Etc. So, have an experiment with that. Obviously, Retrolog is included uh, with Cubase. Uh, and I'm sure there will be plenty of third-party manufacturers uh, taking this on board and giving you lots more options than this. Because, obviously, with this kind of thing... We're fairly limited on the envelopes, and if we had uh, more advanced envelopes, particularly with hold in there, there's all sorts of rhythmic things you could do with this that would allow you to do uh, much more complicated and sonically interesting things. But certainly there's plenty of fun to be had in Retrolog with uh, the sidechain until you get some other plugins that allow you to do it. If you've enjoyed these videos and found them useful, then subscribe by clicking on the MTT logo in the bottom of the screen now, also visit musictechtuition.com for tips, tricks and advice, as well as information about the books I've written, The Complete Guide to Music Technology Using Cubase 9 and Music Tech A Level Using Cubase 9. These are a great resource whether you're just getting started or you've been working for a few years now. The information in them will allow you to take your sequencing, recording and production to the next level and give you a well-rounded grounding in all areas of music technology.